Queens on the Row. Welcome to Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry, and today we are starting off an annual series that we have here on the show where we chat with the winners of the Governor's Humanities Awards. And it's my pleasure to have in studio uh, Walt Goodrich. Walt, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Not your first time on the show. Always good to have you here. Thanks again. And congratulations on not just one award, but three awards that you received last week as uh, for research and publications in the humanities, outstanding humanities teacher and preservation of CNMI history. How does it feel to be a recipient? Uh, feels great, feels good. It's nice that I'm able to contribute to the society that I've chosen to live in. Uh, one of the things that's that I thought about that makes my life here in Saipan unique is that this is the only place that I've actually chosen, consciously chosen to live. You know, I was born in Jamaica and uh, I wasn't conscious of that choice. That was just an accident, a <laughs> fortunate accident of birth. Uh, spiritually, I may have chosen it, but it wasn't a conscious choice. Uh, then when my parents moved to the United States, again, that was not uh, uh, any choice that I had in mind about Saipan is the first place, and I consider this a foreign country, <laughs> a different country, even though it's part of, the, part of the U.S., that I've actually chosen to live, made a conscious choice to uh, relocate here, and I'm happy I did, to have been able to contribute to the society and be recognized for it. And how did you end up here? Huh. Uh, <laughs> I, I was make it as short as possible. I had never heard about Saipan until December of 2005, and a friend of mine who had visited Japan was in New York, and we met up at a party, and he just started talking about his trip to Japan and the fact that they, the people he was working with brought him to Saipan, and he had a wonderful time, said the weather is nice, the people are friendly, the girls are pretty, and something just clicked in my mind that, I needed to be there, and three months, two months later, in February of 2006, I was here. <laughs> Best decision I ever made in my life. Well, we're really... And so I want to thank my friend Ken, <laughs> <laughs> and my friend Ken for introducing me to Saipan. Well, we're really fortunate to have you a part of our community, um, looking at um, all that you've uh, done for uh, the community here. And um, I want to start off with, um, um, some of the publications that you've either written yourself and, and you've also, well, maybe those that you've helped others write would come under a different award, but um, your first publication, and this is just what you've done here in the Marianas, mm -hmm. uh, Chicken Feathers and Garlic Skin. Right. <laughs> that, the first publication was actually Jamaican on Saipan, which chronicled my uh, escape from America in my first year here on, on the island. But, after that, I wrote Chicken Feathers and Garlic Skin with a young lady named Chun Yu Wang. She was a garment factory worker. And when I came here to Saipan, I discovered that there, were gar there was a whole garment factory industry here and realized that a lot of people, myself, even a lot of residents, were not aware of what exactly was going on in the, in the garment factories that were all around Saipan. So I saw an opportunity to um, share that story with the world and that actually has been the most successful of the books that I've written in terms of the feedback, in terms of the um, reach to other countries and to the mainland, that it's, a, it's the first and only account of what it was like to be a garment factory worker here on Saipan, at least from a uh, Chinese perspective. I remember when that book came out, uh, there actually weren't a lot of people doing either publication, local um, authors do either doing publication, definitely not self-publication, so it was kind of a um, something different really mm -hmm. on the market. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to mention that uh, Walt and I, for our listeners, are wearing our masks while we're doing this production because of the uh, community spread of uh, COVID in the last few days here in Saipan. And so if we sound muffled, it's not your hearing, it's us mm -hmm. practicing our three W's. Um, the other, um, well, another publication, there's something about Saipan. Yes, uh, that one is a more recent um, publication. And that came about when I started doing tours of the island. Um, it's not something I intended to do, it was just a request that request that kept coming for people who were here for a short time and wanted to experience the island. And in the course of doing 
the tours, I learned so much about the island and I've come to realize just really how unique Saipan is. So the title of the book is There's Something About Saipan, A Visitor's Guide to Fantastic Facts, Tantalizing Trivia, Startling Statistics, Dramatic Diaries, <laughs> and a Hair-Raising History from America's Most Colorful Island Territory. Now, how did you get anything else in the book with that be the title? <laughs> so it has all sorts of cultural um, facts and trivia, historical. Uh, I did a tour just yesterday, and I was remarking to the uh, woman who I was um, giving the tour to that when you think about some of the earth-changing and history-changing things that have happened throughout the human experience. You have to mention, you know, putting men on the moon. You would also have to mention uh, something really um, uh, devastating like the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So when you put things in perspective in terms of what are the major things that the human race has either uh, done or affected, you know, life on the planet, the bombing of Hiroshima is definitely one. And a lot of people know about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but they may not know where the planes took off from. I mean, if you look in a lot of history books, sometimes they'll just mention that the U.S. bombed Hiroshima, but a lot of people had no idea that it, the, the planes took off from Hiroshima, from um, uh, Tinian. Mm -hmm. So when you put that in perspective to realize that we here on this island are, are an, an indelible part of the history of the planet, you know, by the fact that uh, Tinian and the Battle of Saipan are so critical in terms of uh, changing the course of the war and changing the course of, of history. So that's just one, one thing, but there's so much uh, unique history and culture and even the contemporary lifestyle here with um, Chamorros, Carolinians, Pacific Islanders, Filipinos, Koreans, Bangladeshis, uh, Thai, mm -hmm. you know, Chinese, all living Basically on everybody <laughs> from all over the world. <laughs> right, all living here in one uh, and just so, so much, so, so unique. So anyway, that's what that little book is about, just putting all of those uh, uh, unique things that I've learned along the way into one convenient, pocket-sized source. <laughs> I think one of the things about being um, a published author, you have uh, a YouTube channel. What else do you have going on? You have a lot going on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a different show. But my question was, like, how far are you taking the message of the Marianas out into the world? Like, what? Where are where are your viewers and readers giving right. you feedback from? Well, first, let me say the, uh, the way you phrased it was is interesting. Yes, I realize now, just from you, from what you said, that I am taking the message out there, but it's not something I'm conscious of doing. Uh -huh. you know? Well, it's either. <laughs> For example, I was in a documentary that the BBC um, uh, put out about extreme weather, and they contacted me to be a representative to talk about what it, it, Typhoon U2 was like here on Saipan, but it, that's not something that I, I sought out. It, they only discovered me because during... The, the, uh, the typhoon, as my um, glass door was being sucked out, <laughs> sucked oh, out into the, into the Well, at least it night. didn't implode. Okay, go. Uh, right, it was going back and forth. But I had the presence of mind to film it <laughs> and put it up on oh YouTube. Oh, my gosh. So that's how they actually found me wow. and realized, you know, that I had at least some footage of what was going on. So I ended up uh, helping them find other people on the island who were affected. Uh, Janet Sant K. Santos was one individual. So we both appeared on the YouTube, on the BBC documentary uh, on, ty on um, uh, Typhoon YouTube. And um, I was in several books as well uh, representing. But a lot, of, a lot of it, people just find me because of the books that I've written, and then that just adds to the body of work. All right. Well, uh, some of your other publications, Saipan Now and... Saipan Living? Right, Saipan now is a photo book, um, photographs, a lot of people would come to bestseller bookstore and one of, they were, there would be a lot of history books but they didn't have any contemporary images of Saipan. So uh, that was an idea that was given to me by Marlon Reggaeton who used to be the manager at uh, bestseller books. So I uh, got some photographers um, and compiled with Ferdinand Ramos, Ramos, sorry, his uh, photos of the island. 
And Saipan Living is a relocation guide. I also get a lot of requests from people who want to know what life is like here, what's the standard of living, what's the cost of living, what's the rent like. So I put together a, a relocation guide called Saipan Living. Uh, another one of your publications, Drinking Seawater. That was a collaboration with Brisa Ramos, who is one of my coaching clients and also workshop participant. And she had an experience during Typhoon Sotolor, where she was actually out in the elements during the height of the storm because her roof blew off <laughs> in her, where she was living. So again, I, I helped her uh, document that experience in the book Drinking Seawater, which is her experience of life a little bit before, during, and after Typhoon Sotolor. Uh, the last uh, publication that's uh, listed here under your uh, award for research and publications, and I, it's not necessarily in chronological order, but I, I thought you might have something interesting to say about this. Uh, Amelia Earhart on Saipan. Right. <laughs> um, it's actually just a, a tour. It's not a full book. It's a tour uh, booklet, like a souvenir. Because one of, I do tours here on Saipan, and one of the things that I have discovered living here is that there is an additional story to the uh, oft-reported Amelia Earhart disappearance. And I believe, this is my opinion now, that there is enough circumstantial evidence, enough claims of people from the Marshall Islands, from uh, Saipan and other islands, of having sighted a white woman and a white man in Japanese custody during 1937 Japanese-controlled Marshall Islands, such that it bears following the trail to see if there is more to the story, and if, if, if um, Amelia actually did perish at sea, or if she was actually um, imprisoned by the Japanese. So there's enough local stories of her being at the Japanese jail that I put together, uh, included it as part of my tours that I give of the island. And the tour booklet is just a recap of some of what we believe we know about what happened to her actually after she actually quote, disappeared at sea. Quote. You know, and I have to say, uh, based on my personal experience uh, speaking with a gentleman in the Marshall Islands, mm -hmm who also claims uh, to have information on Amelia Hart being here, uh, there, it, the two stories tie together. It's not one or the other, mm -hmm. is the way I see it. Right. Um, the nice thing about this publication is it's, it has a lot of, not only, it has a lot of photos in it, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's very readable, and it has um, some historic photos, mm -hmm. and then it has some like current photos of the Japanese jail mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, so very nice. So, um, are you working on any other publications right now? I am always working on any publication <laughs> <laughs> right now. There's always, there are always ideas, and the way that I actually write my books is sometimes I'll have a germ of an idea, and I'll start a file on it, and I may not be pushing to finish that book, but every couple of days, a couple of weeks, another idea will come, and I'll add to it. So, there's always a couple of books that are in various stages of development, and at some point, something will click, and then I'll move forward and complete that one. So as of right now, nothing nearing completion, but there's always something on the back burner. Always with you, Walt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, that concludes uh, the first half of our discussion, but coming back in the second half, I wanna talk a little bit about your work as a outstanding humanities teacher and preservation of CNMI history. How's that sound? Sounds great. All right, we'll be forward. back after this break. Okay, so that was pretty much half the show. And we can come back to the second half if you would like. All right, so anything you want me to do or not do or? No, I just want you to be awesome like you are. Um, so what uh, I know you were telling me to speed up was for that particular answer or in general you want me to in general keep, keep it short, <laughs> uh, short no that can. means like uh we still have a lot to cover and i'm concerned about the time okay. at the current pace and right, so right, right. and i'm glad you caught it without getting flustered i figured you would because you're a professional but um, yeah no we're good so because that was my intention was to dedicate this whole thing to the second okay. half and also why you do what you do okay that one is cool uh, in terms of preservation of history i think there's some overlap because sure. 
I like the, the Amelia Earhart thing, and some of the books themselves lend themselves to a preservation. Like, if you look at this, it's in a sense it's preserving yes, Saipan, yes, 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 you know, yes. as it is now. So that's how I interpret it. But uh, our final awardee tonight is a prolific, prolific writer, educator, and friend to the Marianas. He's lived on Saipan for nearly two decades, and in that time, he has published numerous books on its history and contemporary community. Additionally, he has been a newspaper columnist and blogger, and can be found giving historical tours around the island. A full list of his entire, entire body of work would be quite extensive. Here to receive the awards for research and publication in the humanities, preservation of CNMI history, and outstanding humanities teacher, is Walt F. J. Goodrich. Humanities Half Hour, we are chatting with one of the awardees of the 2021 Governor's Humanities Award, Walt Goodrich. Walt he, uh, was awarded, as we talked earlier in the show, for research and publications in the humanities and outstanding humanities teacher and preservation of CNMI history. Walt, uh, under outstanding humanities teacher. I think uh, most people probably got their first introduction to you through your passion profit workshops. Right. When I first landed on the island in 2006, um, I did a few workshops for NMC, for Parahita Hish, if I pronounce that correctly. Yes. Um, and various other organizations, helping people discover their passion and turn that into some sort of uh, profitable business or, or venture. So yes, that was my first uh, introduction um, here on Saipan. And then I started doing writers workshops as well. As you mentioned earlier, there weren't a lot of um, people putting their own books out because a lot of people have a misconception about what it requires to get a book out into the market. A lot of people believe they have to be signed by a major publisher and that's just one way of doing it, but I prefer being more in control, being the control freak I am. <laughs> and I, I encourage people to pursue the self-publishing route. And just one thing I'll add, you know, a lot of people believe that they they need the validation of a major publisher in order to feel good about the, the work that they do. But if you think about it, all of the books that I've been recognized for in this award by uh, the heads of the head of state of, of uh, Saipan are, have all been self-published have all been independently published. So they still have value, they still have merit, they still have, they're still recognized on a professional and legitimate level, uh, even though I have not been validated, in quotes, by a major publisher. In fact, if I were to be approached by a major publisher, I would probably turn them down, as I've done in the past. <laughs> but, um, And yes. then also, uh, you help others write their book, with book coaching. Yes. Through the workshops, people have asked if I can um, provide a little extra one-on-one -on -one help, sometimes editing, sometimes just helping them formulate the idea, sometimes co-authoring. So yes, there have been uh, books with uh, Reza, as I mentioned before, books with Dr. John Joyner, um, as well uh, as others who I've helped here on site. Now, if we could just talk a little bit about um, passion profit workshop because I attended mm -hmm. one of your first workshops here in Saipan and if you could just share um, one of the points I really remember is uh, if, if you don't mind sharing mm -hmm. is how like for example I may really like cooking right. I think that was the example you mm -hmm. gave mm -hmm. but if you want to make cooking your your business or basically then there's different ways you could do it other than just opening a kitchen right 
So the whole uh, premise of the uh, turn your passion into profit philosophy is that you first have to figure out your purpose on the planet. You have to figure out why you're here. Why did you choose to come here on, onto this planet? Uh, so that's your purpose. You have to know your purpose first before you turn your passion into profit. So I'll give you an that I'll use the example that you mentioned. When you dis when you figure out what your purpose is, you're either going to be a creator, a savior, a guru, or a guide. And just by hearing those words, you can probably figure out a creator, someone who creates, a, a savior is someone who helps, a guide is someone who, uh, I'm sorry, guru is someone who teaches, and a guide is someone who moves people forward, you know, on a, on a global society level. Uh, people like Mark Zuckerberg might, might be a guide, people like Oprah Winfrey. Um, now, if you like cooking, you discover that your passion is cooking, but, and other people will tell you, oh, um, you know, Catherine, your passion is cooking, you should open up a, a restaurant, you know, and share that passion with the world. But I would advise you first to understand, are you a creator, or are you a savior, or a guru, or a guide? Now, if you determine that you are a guru, then opening a, a teacher, then opening a restaurant might be the worst thing for you because you're not going to get the fulfillment that your purpose requires. So if you are here on the planet to teach others, then with a passion for cooking, it might be better if you started a cooking school to teach the art of cooking rather than a restaurant which focuses more on the creation aspect. So that's a simple, simple example. So it, that's why when I coach people, I wouldn't just automatically say, okay, you like cooking, start a restaurant. I would first find out what is it that you want, what is it that you're here to do? Are you here to teach people? Do you get fulfillment from teaching people? Is that where your passion lies? Is that what makes you feel good in, you know, at the end of the day, the fact that you've shared knowledge? Or is it the fact that you actually do want to create new recipes and actually just share your creations with the world? So if your passion-centered business is not fulfilling your purpose, then you're not going to be as um, satisfied and that's why the restaurant may end up failing because you're not really tapping into the, the purpose driven part of that venture so it's really about like knowing yourself not just what you like but who you are as a person how you like to operate absolutely how you like to operate what your strengths and weaknesses are what gives you the most um, uh, thrill uh, what other people say you're good at but in addition how what sort of feedback you want from people you know, one of the tests I have, discovery exercises that have, what is the sort of feedback that makes you feel the most proud that someone were to say, you know, Catherine, I really didn't know that, uh, what that bit of information that you shared, you know, wow, you're a really good teacher. I'm glad I came to your, you know, your workshop or, you know, or listen to your, your program. So is that, you know, that sort of feedback, if you can actually verbalize what sort of feedback you want that tell that, that, affirms that you are doing the thing you are meant to do, then you have to find a way to incorporate that into the business so that you can get that feedback and know that you're doing the thing that, that uh, you're here to. Well, thank you for sharing that short summary of the workshop <laughs> with us. <laughs> the, I, I would okay. recommend anybody to attend the full workshop, but th that's really a gem that we can all take with us today. Um, the, your last award, at least for this year, at this time, <laughs> not, not the last award for life, preservation of CNMI history, including uh, documentaries, or is it more than one documentary on America's Forgotten Colonies? It was one. There was a series they did, uh, La Mancha Media did a documentary on Guam, uh, one in American Samoa, and one in the CNMI, and I was the guide for the CNMI documentary, so there was that one. Then there was a title U2, and then there was also um, a book entitled The Not Quite States of America by Douglas Mack uh, that I appeared in that book as well. So um, I also believe that in some ways there's an overlap. So even though there is a separate category for publication, some of the publications themselves, or all of them to some degree, are preserving CNMI history. So when you talk about the garment, industry and you look at the photos in Saipan now or even the Amelia Earhart tour booklet in some way it is preserving the culture uh, of the island or whether it's contemporary or whether it's historical of what the island was at this particular moment in time so 
That's why I can't get into the minds of the board members who <laughs> chose me for the award, but I believe that there's a little overlap in terms of uh, what the awards represent. Absolutely. Um, another um, product of yours is uh, the World War II pilgrimage tours? About a year after I started the Saipan Living Site, I got a call from a doctor who was visiting the island for three days and she said, I'm only here, I think maybe it was one day, I'm only here for a day and I need to see as much of Saipan as possible. I wasn't doing tours at that time, it was just a special request from someone who had come across my book. And I agreed, did the tour, gave her a full day tour of the entire island, drove around for 100 miles all over the island. That's typical. <laughs> when I do my tours, I looked at the odometer and it, it's 100, you know, I ended up driving 100 miles. And she said it was great. And that one, as they say, one thing led to another. And I started doing more tours, realized I enjoyed it and that it was serving a purpose for people who are coming from the mainland who don't want to be in a big bus tour with 50 other people and they just rather have a personalized tour and that's a cool thing i actually enjoy that a lot because i get to meet people from all over the world and i'm sure you're a great storyteller and i will let other people <laughs> answer that question <laughs> you know is there anything you all you don't do there's actually also a couple of websites on this list here right there's we love .com. that was the first site uh, that i started and for those who have been living and aware long enough, when I first came to the island in 2006, there wasn't much positive information about Saipan on the internet. And there's a website that I've, I've, I've never actually seen, but a lot of people will remember there was a very negative website about Saipan if you did a search. So I decided to start We Love Saipan to counter that. And- I remember that website. And uh, <laughs> I, um, did other websites after that, in order, you know, just to add, to make um, more positive images of the island for people to see whenever they do a search. So if you do a search now, uh, the best place to go actually is bestofsaipan.com and you'll see all, I have about 20 different Saipan websites um, that I've created. So it's pretty easy if you do a search on Saipan, you'll come across one of those. You know, it seems like you, you kind of have an idea and you just go for it. Why do you do what you do? I do what I do. I, I realized years ago that my purpose in life is I share what I know so that others may grow. So the teaching aspect is very dear to my heart. I learned some new information. I think it's valuable. So I like to share it with other people. So all of the, even the chicken feathers and garlic skin, the book, uh, There's Something About Saipan, is really just me sharing what I've learned with other people that I think it's, it's interesting. Some people may think it's strange that I, as a Jamaican, would travel 8,000 miles to the other side of the world to share what I know about Saipan <laughs> with the rest of the world. But it just, ha just happens to be where I live and what I learn here, I share with the world. But I do it just to show people what's possible if you follow your passion. When I do my travel blog, jamaicaninchina.com, I'm very conscious of the fact that all I'm doing, I'm not doing it for the personal praise or recognition, I'm doing it to show people that yes, you can be you know, from Jamaica, you can be from the US and decide to travel all the way across the world and this is the sort of re uh, reception that you can, not everyone will get, I guess, but this, it's not, it may not be as you have been told. So people sometimes fear traveling because they think they'll be, uh, they'll be, they'll be biased or prejudice or you know whatever else. But so I do it just to show people a different reality that is possible. Well, I really want to thank you for your time today and definitely give you an opportunity to share your contacts for people who would like to learn more about any of these things we've talked about today. The best place to see all the Saipan specific websites is best of saipan.com and if you'd like to learn about me and what i do you can go to waltgoodridge.com that's w-a-l-t-g-o-o-d-r-i-d-g-e.com and if you want to see my saipan specific resume you can go to jamaican on saipan.com walt want to congratulate you once again for your awards and um 
also thank you for all the other people in our community that you've helped empower uh, on the journey. Thank you and congratulations. Again. Thank you very much and I'll th thank you and the Humanities Council. I really appreciate the recognition and the opportunity. Thanks. We've been chatting today with 2021 Governor's Humanities Awardee Walt Goodrich, who won awards for research and publications in the humanities, outstanding humanities teacher, and preservation of CNMI history. This is your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry. <laughs> I like the fact that you actually limit, reduce the amount of editing you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> by just by just making editing in real time, you, I mean, keeping it exactly Live. 29 yeah. minutes as opposed to because you know you. Oh could, no! I need to because we chatted for two minutes, mm -hmm. so um, or so, I need to go. Um, I need to clean yes, it up. Be, then I gotta take out our our chit chat and put in the commercial, put in the opener and the close. Right, right. But still, the the yes, we did this. I, I without retakes. And stuff, and, you know. <laughs> Except me in the beginning. Um, when I forgot what show I was doing. Because, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's efficient. And occasionally... Are we done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sure you're wondering what secret Catherine was about to reveal. Unfortunately, that wasn't captured on video. So you'll just have to keep wondering. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.